So before this video begins, I'd really like you guys to help me out. Go sub to this guy in the description right now, his top link. His channel, even though he has 11 subs, I've been really surprised by his content. He's been pushing out some actually really well put together videos, and I think it's really worth a watch. Alright, let's get into the video. Welcome back, or welcome for the first time. In today's episode, we will be taking a look at our rapidly growing Campanatus neurecticus colony. Or is it? Now you might be wondering, why would someone like me be questioning myself? Well, I'm not sure. I thought it was Nerecticus for the longest time, because they had four queens. And then someone mentioned Vicinus and a few others, and after looking at them, I'm still not sure. But maybe you guys can help me out. Throughout this video, there will be multiple chances to get really good looks at the queens and different workers. Another thing I've noticed is tri-colored workers, so some of them have black heads and some of them have more like yellowish pale heads, and yes, these are fully enclosed. I'm not exactly sure, some of the queens are also different, some of them are fully black and some of them have red, kind of like mini Nove Boracenses. I'm not sure. Also yes, I will add that I am sick at the moment and this sucks. Let's go over the backstory of this colony. Our story begins August of 2019. Me and my family head up to Alberta for a family trip. Before going, I talked to a few people around that area and met up with one of them. This was the first time I've ever seen Pogna Remex and Fedoli in Canada. That day was amazing. I was able to take home two Pogna Remex queens, and that was about it. We left the Fedoli alone as it was pretty rare and we wanted to see next year when they had their nuptial flights if we could catch any then. While we got talking, she offered me a colony of Campanatus that was inside a log. She had no idea what size it was or what species it was. She was assuming Vicinus at the time, but we had no idea. Of course, I accepted the offer, and we took it home. Once we got home, there was quite a struggle to try and get them out of the log. But eventually, I was able to crack open pieces of the log and narrow down to where the colony was located. With a little bit of light and a little bit of water, we were able to scare the colony out, and what came out was insane. There were so many workers and so many queens. I had an ants Australian nest already on the way for them once I saw how big they were, but I needed a temporary nesting location, so I moved them into a Tar Heel ants nest. Once the ants Australian nest arrived, I moved them into that. They had a bit of larvae but no eggs, which made sense because of the way she was feeding them. She assumed the colony only had about 50 workers or so, and she had no idea how big it was. But once we cracked it open, that log probably had about 500 workers in it and four queens. This is the main reason I prefer nests that you can see the colony in if you need to. That way you know what they require for food and you're not overfeeding or underfeeding them. I was so pumped. I did a video on them once feeding them the larvae, I'm sure you remember that, that was quite an intense video. Welcome back to another video. In this week's episode, we will watch as a magnificent beast battles it out with our brand new carpenter ant colony. And I hadn't really done an update on them until now. So here we are. Spring is on its way, and the queens have been busy. All of a sudden, one day, they just started laying like crazy. There's probably about 150 eggs so far, and about 30 pupae. And there's more eggs every day. Because there's four queens, they're always rotating who's laying. Campanatus lays with breaks in between. This way, there's always queens that are laying eggs, and they're always hungry. My favorite thing to do is put apple slices in the outworld. Most ants just lick the juices and drink them for the most part, but these ants will literally eat the entire apple down to the skin. It's amazing to watch. Okay, okay, let's take a look at them with some better shots now. If you love Campanatus and you love detail, then you'll definitely love this shot. I managed to capture a larvae spinning its cocoon, 
but it's already inside the cocoon and still webbing around inside. So you can see it like translucent right through. It's so cool. Now let's go over some of the shots where we get better clarity of the queens because I'd really appreciate it if somebody could help me out here. So far, we've went over these species as possible candidates. Campanatus discolor, Campanatus neurycticus, and Campanatus vicinus. These were caught in Alberta. As of now, I still don't know exactly what they are. Some of the queens are more darker and some of them are more red. They're quite smaller than Campanatus noveboricensis or Pennsylvanicensis. I'd say about three fourths to almost one half the size. They're quite small. If you have any ideas, please feel free to drop them in the comments below because I'm always open to suggestions and I'll take a look and see. But I'm sure you guys want to see them in action, right? So let's give them a mealworm. Another thing they absolutely desire and devour is apple. Depending on how hungry they are, within a week they can completely devour an entire slice. It's quite mind blowing to watch. You can see here how the color reflected amazingly to create this extremely clear shot. Definitely one of my favorites. Spring is beginning and so is their brand new batch of workers. So, I will definitely keep updating on this on my Instagram as well as YouTube, and I am really excited about this. I haven't had a really successful Campanatus colony yet, so this will definitely be exciting. Make sure you follow my Instagram to keep updated with all these colonies. I'm definitely going to be moving them into a Waitong nest sometime, as I'm pretty sure they'll like that much better. It better represents wood, and it'll keep them more dry. They seem to be doing pretty good in the acrylic so far, so we'll see how that goes as well. I have quite a big order coming from the ant keeping depot with various nests that I've never tried before. So hopefully I'll be able to test some of them out, move some colonies into them, and then do a review on them. There's quite a few queens and colonies behind the scenes I have yet to feature on this channel. So I'm really excited to do so this spring as well as this summer. I really thought about this video for a long time on how I was going to make it, and I still didn't work it out completely 100% how I wanted it to turn out, but I decided that a video had to be posted, no matter what it was, no matter how I made it, because it has been too long. So hopefully this will be my redemption, even though I say this every second video, to me not uploading for those two months or so. I'm super excited for this spring and summer, and I hope you guys are too. And with that, I depart. Until the next video. Have a good one, guys.